afternoon here in northeastern Ohio. The bottom line is you get this one in, or you, at least you try to, so you don't have to play a doubleheader tomorrow. Season wraps up tomorrow with a 3 o'clock start. Corey Kluber and the Tribe take the field. Here's the Boston Red Sox starting lineup for interim manager Tori Lovello. Mookie Betts leading it off followed by Josh Rutledge. Xander Bogarts batting third. Travis Shaw in the cleanup spot. Bruce Ney Castillo will hit fifth, and it's Brock Holt, Devin Marrero, Sandy Leone, and Jackie Bradley Jr. Our Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher will be Corey Kluber tonight, his 32nd and final start this year. Corey on the year with a record of 8 and 16. You know, it's hard to believe that he has 16 losses, but he does. You mentioned 186 hits in his 214 innings, 236 strikeouts. In his career, he's 0-2 against the Red Sox. 0-1 this year. He made a start earlier in the year, went six innings, gave up six hits and six runs. And he has struggled against the AL East teams this year. He's He's gone over a year before he has a win, and he's made five starts against them this year. So he's looking for that win, and he's also looking to end it on a good note. Let's uh, check out the Indians' defense brought to you by Dodge that is playing behind Kluber tonight. It's going to be Avilas in left field, Almonte is in center, Sands over and right, Urshela at third, Lindor at short, Kipnis is at second, Santana at first, Jan Gomes doing the catching. The umpires, David Rackley has the plate, Bob Davidson is at first, crew chief Hunter Wendelstadt at second, Marvin Hudson down at third. So we're ready to go as Corey Kluber will face Mookie Betts to start tonight. Mookie Betts has batted 295 with 18 homers and 77 runs batted in. He has a streak of reaching base 35 consecutive ball games as well. Going back to the 24th of August. Kluber's fastball in there for strike one. He continued that streak last night in his fourth at bat with a walk in the eighth inning. Low and away. One ball, one strike. Checks on a ball outside. He's the first major leaguer to hit 42 doubles, eight triples, and 18 homers in a season in which he was 22 years or younger since Jack Clark back in 1978. The last American League player to do that, and the only other Red Sox player to ever do it at that age, Teddy Ballgame. No kidding. 1940. And 1939. <laughs> Guess he was something of a prodigy, huh? Yeah. Betts takes three and two. Josh Rutledge, a late addition of the lineup in for Dustin Pedroia. That spoils it. Spoiled a pretty good pitch there on the outside corner. The payoff. Wow, just missed outside, and it's ball four. Oh, 
don't think Kluber's real happy about it. Either. Well, just off the edge. Watch Gomes' glove. He's got it, and he's got it. It was a little bit outside. He fouled off that pitch that was right on the outside edge, the pitch before that, and that one was just a little bit further away. And now Josh Rutledge. Takes a strike. Rutledge came at the trading deadline from the Angels when Boston sent Shane Victorino West. And the Angels are going to take this thing right down to the wire in the wild card race. Well, they what a comeback they had today. They were down 10 to 6 in the ninth inning. And ended up scoring five for the win. So they've closed the gap to a half game on Houston. Astros will be in action later on. Followed back. Yeah, if Houston wins now, they clinch, correct? And then that means uh, the Rangers win the West. And Houston's the wild card. Because didn't they have a better record against the uh, the Angels if they ended up in a tie? Now the 0-2. Oh, throw to first instead. For Kluber on the year, his ERA in the first inning is 581. He's given up 21 runs in the 31 games started to this point. Down on the dirt. Nice block. Snap throw to first. Back with a dive is Betts. Corey Kluber. Runner goes, great jump, 2-2, two -two swing and a miss, strikes him up, throw down, and it's a safe call because Kipnis just couldn't hold on to it. Very nearly a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Boy, they had the chance. Don't know if that, uh, if Betts even uh, knocked the ball out of the glove of Kipnis. Gomes came up quickly and made a nice throw. Looks like it might have been at the ground at the same time Betts arrived, and he knocked it out of the glove. Let's see. Looked like he would have been out. Yeah, the ball was sinking down in the dirt. Yeah, it was sinking towards back towards the runner, and he couldn't really get a grip on it. So Betts gets his 21st stolen base. At the knees, a strike call to Xander Bogarts, who was one for three, scored a run last night. Right at the shortstop, Lindor makes the grab on the fly, and scampering back was Betts, two away. Good base running. To get back on that ball. A lot of base runners would have 
been able trying to score, but look at that. Well, this is the only thing left to be decided. And as you pointed out, if Houston loses tonight, the Rangers are Western champs. Right. That is correct. And then, the, you know, there'd be a nice playoff for that wild card tomorrow. And, and then if Houston loses, obviously, then them and the Angels are tied going into the final day in a wild card. So things could get interesting. To center field. Almonte makes the grab. No runs, no hits, one left. The Indians are coming to bat when we come back. by Progressive Insurance. Francisco Lindor in the leadoff spot. Mike Avila is batting second. Then it's Jason Kipnis. Ryan Rayburn, Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes in the middle. Giovanni Urshela, Abraham Almonte, and Jerry Sands round it up. Greg Breslow is our Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher. Now this guy's made 520. This is his 24th appearance. This is his second start in his career. The last start he got was against Baltimore. A reliever his whole career. So this will be his second start in his career. He's uh, one and three against the Indians. And, uh, you, you know, he's going to be on a pitch count. There's no doubt about it. He'll throw about 60 pitches, 65 pitches today and see what happens. So you'll go up there and you figure he's going to throw strikes. Because if he has a, a 25 or 30 pitch inning, it could be a, a very short night for him. Popped him up, back. And the catcher is there. Leon makes the grab. Lindor fouls out. Here's the Red Sox defense brought to you by Dodge. It'll be Castillo on left field. Bradley in center. Betts over and right. Marrero at third. Bogarts at short. Rutledge is at second. Shaw at first. Leon the catcher. Mike Avilas will bat here with a one out on the first. One for two with a run scored yesterday. Pitch up high, ball one. Down and in, two and oh. And Avila shoots it foul right side out of play. You know, you go back for Breslow, and, you know, he hasn't faced the Indians since facing four out of five appearances over a 12-day span back in 2014 and in June when they came here and we went to Boston. All out of the bullpen. 
That's just foul third base side. Now the 2 2 popped up out of play. Jason Kipnis waiting on deck. No, 2 2. Another foul right back. That was right into Carey's living room. Here you go. I mean, it was a direct hit. That's like if you're the catcher. Right at you. Boom. Breslow's 2 2. Outside full count. Now the payoff pitch. And another foul out of play. <laughs> Did you see that note about Breslow and, and uh, our old buddy Scott Atchison? No. According to Elias, as Breslow's payoff pitch is fouled out of play. At 35 years and 49 days old, Craig Breslow passed Scott Atchison as the oldest Red Sox pitcher ever at the time of his first career Major League start. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, Rich Hill, they ended up starting Rich Hill in September as well. Down on strikes is Avilas. Our key to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Some run support for Kluber. Always a welcome sight. Two down here in the first. According to Elias, also the last American League pitcher to start a game, make his first Major League start at age 35 or older in the American League, Danny Boone. Not Daniel Boone, Dan but Danny Boone. <laughs> his cousin, Danny. Who was 36 when he did it for the Orioles in 1990, and it happened to be on September the 30th, so probably Same date, huh? kind of a right there at the end of the season deal. Sure. I don't remember Danny. Here is a ball ripped to right field and it'll get down. Betts cuts it off. He'll hold Kip to a two out single. Looks like Kip picked on a breaking ball here. Or is it a changeup that he left middle? Ends up pulling the ball down to the right field. Thought it was going to get by him for a double. Did not. He cut it off nicely. Yeah, I suppose if your name's Daniel Boone, you go by Danny. Yeah. It's just, you know. Well, Danny Boone. Out of respect. Danny Boone was a left-hander. He was 5'8", 150 pounds. He pitched for the Padres in 81 and 82 in the Astros and then didn't pitch in the big leagues again until 1990 when he made that start for the Orioles. That's crazy. Who would draft a 5'8", 150? We've played an inning. No score in Cleveland.
tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcast stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Rusne Castillo will lead off. He went over three last night. And Kluber with a good fastball to get ahead, strike one. Back to the screen. And a count, nothing in two. Now the 0-2 offering. Strike three call. That didn't take long. Three pitches, one out. Time now for our Levin Furniture player profile. You'll like this, Arch. Francisco Lindor made his Major League debut June 14th in 1986. Corey Snyder came up on June the 13th. Nice. Look at their numbers. 24 homers for Corey Snyder. Interesting, isn't it? Both first-round picks. One was fourth, the other was eighth. Nice. Nice little stat right there. We'll have Corey coming up next inning. And I'm sure we'll get him to reminisce on that time in his life. Yeah, that was his, his rookie year was, what, 86 year where he came up. And then 87 was a year when, of course, that team was on the, the cover of the Sports Illustrated magazine as yeah. this year's club was. I think Corey's been asked about that a few thousand times uh, in his career. I, I would, I would think so. And we'll probably ask him about it again tonight. I'm still kind of, you know how I've always loved the, the way baseball weaves its way in and out and connects people. I'm still hung up on uh, Dan, Danny Boone. So... He signed with uh, Milwaukee when you were there, by the way. Really? But he didn't wasn't in the big leagues. He signed with them, but he was in the minors. And so what, 86? 83, 84. Okay. When you went over there. I'll so be darned. He That's probably would have never Adi seen was him. over there. You know, he would have been in the minors. Right. But he washed out, and he, he kicked around in the minors in the next five years. Boom, he was out of baseball. Just, just fell off the radar. 1989, he gets another chance. Is that strike three called on Brock Holt, Corey Kluber? Carvano up two quick outs here in the second. His second chance came via something you participated in, and that's the Senior Professional Baseball Association. <laughs> he played with the Bradenton Explorers. Okay. He played with Fort, Fort Myers, Myers Sun Sox. Yeah. And here's the thing, though. When he came back, came back with a the knuckleball. Ball. Well, that wouldn't surprise me, a little left-hander. And that's how the Orioles gave him an opportunity to pitch in 1990. Okay. And in September, he got the call up. And wouldn't you know it, his first ever major league start came against the Cleveland Indians. <laughs> <laughs> he did not get a decision. And that was it. That was the That's, final game of his career. That's something. It, yeah, how you connect the dots, no question. You talk about one thing, which leads to another, which leads to another. And in, in turn, it always comes back in a vicious circle, it seems like. Somehow you, Cleveland, they're always uh, inter inter intertwined. Milwaukee, the 1-1. One -one. Devin Marrero awaits the 1-2 pitch. And he just got a piece of that to stay alive. Corey Kluber, sharp at the outset. Walked the leadoff man on a borderline pitch. Since then, he's been razor sharp.
The one two. Breaking ball in the dirt. Now the 2-2. Two -two. And he got a piece of that to stay alive. Chilly enough here where the pitchers are allowed to blow into their hand to get a little moisture in there tonight. Clover's 2-2. Two -two. Downstairs and in the dirt, full count. Time called. Marrero steps away. Here's the payoff pitch. Another borderline. That's almost exactly like the one that started the game. And Kluber's reaction was very similar. He thought he had it, didn't get the call. Uh, this one was, look, it had, had the plate maybe a little yeah. low. I'll tell you, close ones to take. When you're a hitter, this guy hasn't played every day, and he, you know he's up here getting a start, so he was able to lay off it and draw a walk with two outs. Sandy Leone, switch hitting catcher, in 108 at bats, has collected 19 hits. Pops this out of play. Strike called. Leone came to Boston from Washington right at the end of spring training. Made his uh, first career opening day roster. Played 33 games before he was designated for assignment. See ya. Indeed. The inning is over. Kluber strikes out three. Give him four on the night. No score. Middle of the second.
check out the final game of the season from the corner with the $13 district tickets. Presented by Sports Time Ohio. Tickets available only at Indians.com. Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes, and Giovanni Urshela for the Tribe here in inning number two. Santana, two for three with a double. And last night's series opener, and that double cleared the bases when they were loaded up. There's another ball hammered by Santana deep to left. That's headed for the bleachers and gone to Souvenir City. Number 19 for Carlos Santana. It'll give the Indians a 1-0 lead. Give him 19 homers in his 85th RBI. Got a pitch to his liking, and boy, he likes to extend it. Look at Breslow. He knew that was out of here. Santana, that's the fourth home run from the right side of the plate. And it gives him 85 RBIs, which Team equals late. his career best, which he did last year. And Jan Gomes, the batter, takes a look at a ball outside one on one. Gomes one for five with a double last night. He's hit in nine straight games, so he at least takes a little momentum into the offseason. There's a drive deep right, and that's over the head of Betts. It'll be a 10-game hitting streak for Gomes as he goes into second base with a double. Second straight extra base hit. Stayed on that ball nicely. This will be our McDonald's. I'm loving it for Gomes' 22nd double. There's a ball out over the plate, and it was down into his zone. He likes it down a little bit more. Shoots it over the head of Betts, and he can go get him. Just out of reach. Goes up against the wall, not before Gomes. Cruises into second. The home run. By Carlos Santana, by the way, tells us they tell us traveled 406. A tail of the tape. Giovanni Urshela is swinging a miss. We're in the bottom of the second. Tribe on top looking to add to it. Urshela tries to shoot him to right. Bets over. Near the line makes the grab, and Gomes has to hold at second base one away. Our injury report brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk. Zach Walters. Underwent left shoulder surgery yesterday. He'll be out almost half a year. Suffered that injury during the International League Championship Series. So depending on how quickly he gets healed up, he'll be ready to go either during spring training or sometime at the end of spring training. First ball swinging. Abraham Almonte pops it up on the infield. Two down. Yeah, and that'll bring up Jerry Sands. Jerry had a good night. 
In last night's ball game, he doubled and homered in his home run to right field. I mean to tell you, it shot out of here like it was on the old clothesline in the backyard. And it was a high breaking ball that he stayed on and hit to right field. A strike is called to Jerry Sands. Popped him up on the infield, the shortstop Bogarts. Makes the grab, but the home run by Santana puts the Indians in front one to nothing through two. Going to the top of the third, Matt Underwood, Rick Manning with you, and joined now by Indians alumni ambassador Corey Snyder. Welcome. Thanks good to, you, good to man. be here. How yeah, you doing? Good. Real good. Real good. Former power hitter. You had to like that home run swing from Carlos Santana. Huh? Very nice. Yeah, yeah, he's got some pop there a little bit. Yeah. Needs a few more RBIs, but other than that, he's okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> You've been following. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he has. Uh -huh. Scotty yeah. was up here last night talking about it. He said when you two went out to throw out the first pitch, it was they were sitting so close together down there, you weren't sure oh, you could so get close. in. Oh, so close. He goes, just don't didn't hurt anybody. <laughs> exactly. Now you had a tremendous throwing arm. In addition to being a great power hitter, you had a throwing arm that was second to none, I think, in the outfield during your time. Did how did you how did you get better? I mean, how did you harness that ability to throw? Me and Joe Carter long toss every day. Yeah. We used to throw foul pole to foul pole, I mean, every day just to get it strong, keep it loose. And uh, it was just, you know, I took pride in throwing people out. That's what it was all about. And I enjoyed, uh, you know, doing that part of it, helping that pitcher out and throw somebody out and get him to stop at second base instead of going first to third. Yeah, not many people throw like they used to. You know, you used no. to see a lot better arms back in the, uh, you know, the old days than now. It's different when you see somebody, they stand out like oh, a sore thumb, time. you oh, know yeah. what I mean? Big time. It's good to see guys that, you know, really take pride in that part of their game and, uh, and work hard at it. Minnesota has a rookie, Rosario, that has 16 assists. Hey, yeah, nice. and he's played in left field and both right field. He's a rookie. You're going to see a lot of him in the near future. Oh, you good. Keep an That'd eye be good on to him. See. Because you're what? You're coaching now. You're the batting coach in the Seattle organization for AAA, yeah. uh -huh. right? Yep. So tell us how your year went. You know, it went good. We got, uh, I think I got about six or seven guys in the big leagues this year. So it's, I mean, it's a good and a bad of it. 
You yeah. know, you're not going to do, you know, real well in AAA just because when the guys go going really good, they take them to the big leagues, and then you got to. <laughs> well, that's a goal. I mean, you know, they want they're just on their stop, hopefully, and exactly. head to the big leagues. Exactly. I mean, you got a new crop of guys. You got to break in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's it's a fun thing for me, just because you know we just it kind of brings back the memories of when we got that call. Yeah. And we got to bring him in the you know office and say, hey, you know, we going to the big leagues, and you know, you get high fives, you get hugs, you get people crying. Yeah, it, right. Uh, I mean, you kind of get a little bit of every, everything of it. But it's, I mean, it, it's an exciting thing for us because, I mean, that's what we work for. We work to get them there, you know, mentally prepared and, and physically prepared to, to play in the big leagues. And it's just neat to see. How much, uh, when you're the hitting instructor, do you go to the video and do the hitters look at it in AAA? Oh, a lot. It's, yeah, they video everything. Every, everything, so everything, everything yeah. is just like the big leagues. They oh, yeah. take everything uh, as they would at the big they league level. It, just, it teaches them, you know, I think the biggest thing is video is teaching them what to look at. Because they just go in and look at the bad things. Right. You know, what did I do wrong? How come I didn't get a hit? Why didn't I do this? Instead of, you know, how did the guy get you out? Right. What did he throw you? You know, I mean, seeing, uh, ru- seeing routines, seeing what they're trying to do, and they kind of go in there and look at the at the wrong things but get them used to uh, to doing it right. That's the key is the, what what to look for. I mean, you can look at a video all day long, but if you don't look at the, the right part of what, the, you know, how the guy's getting you out, how are you going to make the adjustment? Oh, exactly. That's that's the key. And it's just, you know, at that level, you know, it's just minor adjustments, not any overhauls. And it's understanding that process is we're in AAA. You know what? Physically, they can play in the big leagues. Yeah. It's just making them smarter, you know how to, you know how, how to look at guys, and you know when the guy's in scoring position, what's what's going on when he gets into this count, what's he going to probably throw you in, and understanding that process of, it's just you know it's a numbers game, but it's understanding you know what every pitcher falls into a groove and he falls into a routine, and that's just, that's what it is. Yeah. Patterns are big, yeah. Corey, with the facilities now that every big league club has, with that most minor league clubs have now. Talking about hitting cages, you know, T areas to do soft toss work, uh, the video that's available for not only big league players but minor league players as well. Why do you think offense is down across the board in baseball right now? You know, I think the pitchers are getting better. I mean, the, the velocity is up. They they have they can all command. When they get the big leagues, they're commanding three pitches. You know what I mean? And, and it's just uh, it's amazing. And I think. My opinion, I think this, you know, the cybergenic, you know, all that stuff, you know, taking pitches, getting behind, pitch counts, all kind of stuff, it just, I think it hurts guys. I mean, if, if you're a big league pitcher and you give him one strike down the middle, right. now you're 0-1. Yeah, exactly. And now he makes you chase one, now you're 0-2. He has to throw one quality pitch and you're out. Yeah. So it's like, you know what, I mean, I, I try to teach my guys, put pressure on the pitcher. Doesn't matter if it's 0 1 2 0, even 3 0. You know what? Take a swing yeah. at it because if he feels like, you know what, they're going to swing at any count, he's going to start right. picking, and then you're going to, I guarantee you're going to have more walks. You're going to get yourself in better counts. I Not- mean, it's just the way it is, but they're, they're just, they're too good to give them an easy fastball strike these days. Nothing wrong with getting aggressive, seeing that first fastball, and get after it. So, yeah. Exactly. Oh, well, if you me- hit it and put it in play, fine. If you make it out, that's fine too, as long as you're. Swing at the pitch you're looking at. If you're looking for a fastball, then you don't swing at the breaking ball, right? right? You exactly. take it. That's and if he throws exactly. a strike, it's okay. You're still alive. Exactly. Exactly. You know what's fun to watch is the Royals. Yeah, they're aggressive. They Very are aggressive. aggressive. It's yeah. a, they're not taking you – know, if you throw me a fastball, I'm swinging at it. And yeah. it's just – you know, it's like you talk to guys. I mean, I do averages all, all the time. You know, 3-0 pitches, I think you hit like 380 when they swing a 3-0 pitch. But big leaguers only three swing, not, like I think it's like nine point seven percent of the time. A lot of guys don't like to swing and it's at like, it that. Well, yeah. I go, why don't you swing? Well, I don't want to get out. Well, that's just negative. Yeah. What, what if you right. hit a double off the wall? Yeah. Well, that's what you need. <laughs> you you did, need a couple yeah. of. Who did we talk to? Said uh, when it's three and zero, oh, I tell myself it's two and one. That was Cal Ripken, wasn't it? Yeah. Was that who? It was? I think it was. That's a pretty good guy. Well, he said he didn't that's... like swinging at a three zero pitch. That's right. Because so I tell he said was, he'd always say, yeah. I, I'd tell myself it's 2-0. and oh, And he ended up swinging at it. Doing well. I said, well, I always go up on every pitch and say it's 2-0. Oh, I'm, I'm just, exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you could do that. I mean, when you're almost guaranteed, here comes a little BP fastball at 90 miles an hour, mm. and it's coming, you know it's coming. Yeah. 
I mean, that's the thing. People don't realize hitting, you're failing. You can succeed into hitting, and you fail 70% of the time, and you can yeah. be a very successful hitter. So most of it is mental. You have got to reprogram oh. your mind every time you go up there. And that's the toughest thing about the daily grind of baseball is trying to stay positive and, you know, healthy, and you're into it every step of the way. It's hard to do. Oh, oh the way, guaranteed. Guys, the last five outs for Corey Kluber have all been via the strikeout. Now, when you were coming up, Corey, in 1986, was the strikeout still, did it still have the uh, the sort of negative connotation? Oh, guaranteed back then. Oh, yeah. They, they were big on, you know, striking out, not striking out. You have too many strikeouts. Now it, it doesn't really matter these days. Right. I mean, they don't really look at it. What's it's your, just kind of one What's your thought on that? Because um, we were saying if you're a power hitter like yourself, we don't want you to have a two-strike approach, you know. Oh, exactly. But there are a lot of guys, Rick said, you know, if you're a, if you're a middle infielder or if you're a little guy, you, you you need to put the ball in play more often. Oh, guaranteed. I mean, I'm I'm for that. I mean, I'm one of those guys. You know, when you're ahead in the counts, early early in the count, early in the game, even to the sixth inning, you know what? Take a hack at it. Go get it. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I wish I had a two strike approach back then. And my my two strike approach is I'm gonna take the same swing. I'm just gonna shift the field because yeah. they're trying to get me out 80 percent of the time away. Uh huh. So you know what? I can still drive the ball to the ballpark right center. You know, and the big guys, let's let's do it. You know, you got your number one, two, you know, you know, eight, nine hitters. You know what? Choke up a little bit or wide out. Do something just to keep your swing shorter and put the ball in play because you got to get on play on base. They're the, the table big guys setters. Bring in. Yeah. Right. They're the exactly. table setters. You know, you have, if you have three power hitters in that lineup, you're it's a, it's a good team. You know. Oh yeah. I mean, legitimate power hitters. That's a great team. You look at the like, let's. All right, out of the clear blue, let's go to Toronto. You, when you got Bautista and and then Donaldson. Donaldson. Those, the other guys just get on base. Those guys hit home runs because pitchers got to challenge those guys. Wow, exactly. Corey Kluber is carving them up. The last six outs, all via the strikeout. He whips the side here in the third. one nothing Indians. We'll continue with Corey right after this. And for Miller time, it's brought to you by Miller Lite. And we go to the bottom of the third with the Indians on top. One to nothing. I like this kid right here. Yeah, fan appreciation night. They're sitting over here. Oh, oh, Lindor, oh, you've had a chance man. to see him play I a little, sure huh? I like that kid. That's funny because before you came up, we did a little split in your rookie year. He was called up, I think, the f day after you were. You were called up the 13th June 12th, of June. June 12th, yeah. Or June 12th. He was called up, I think, the 15th. So oh, we did a nice awesome. little split oh, good. on the numbers. And he was he's having a terrific year average-wise. You know, home runs, you doubled them up. You had 24, I believe, mm -hmm. and 60-some RBIs. But this kid, he's, he's been fun to watch. I like watch. the way he plays the game. Yeah. He just plays it hard. He has fun, too. He has a lot of fun doing it. Breslow just does nice. beat him to the bag one away. Well, that's good to see right there. 
too hot to first base and almost beats it Yeah, out. you go bang, bang at first. It's, yeah, that's right. There you that's go. Good. There's our little split. There we go. 103 games to 97. This is 98 now for Lindor. But you were a fourth round pick or fourth pick in the first round. He was the eighth. It's so nice. that's pretty cool. Man, you like came it. out as a shortstop too, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Came the shortstop and right to the outfield. Yeah. Corey, one thing that Lindor will have to deal with that you had to deal with is expectation. Because when you come up as a rookie and you put up those kind of numbers, people now automatically say, there's your baseline. Now we expect more the next year, and we expect you to become better and better. doesn't always work out because it's not that simple. What did you have to deal with? What will he have to deal with going forward? I think with him, I mean, the biggest thing is you just got to come out and just keep doing what you're doing. You know, you can't, you know, you can't let up. You just got to keep going, you know, go on the offseason, work out, get ready for spring training, come to spring training, ready to go. I mean, expectations is pretty much what you're going to put on yourself. Everybody may have them for you. I get it. But he just has to come out and keep keep doing his game, playing his game, getting smarter, and then he's going to get better, I think. I mean, he just, uh, he's a great young player. But, you know, you can't worry about what you're going to do, how many you're going to hit, you know, and things like that. You just have to come out and just keep playing hard, and that's the main thing. Yeah, and the league will adjust to him next year. Yep. You know, as they say, they'll get to see him more. They'll make adjustments because, they, you know, the teams he's, he has had success against, they will make a change, and he'll continue. But. The good athletes succeed, and they well, just continue to roll. I mean, oh, 1987, yeah. you go to spring training, and the next thing you know, you're going to cover Sports Illustrated <laughs> yeah, after you just played, you know, 100 games in the big leagues for the first time ever. That had to be a little daunting for you. I mean, it, it was, but you know what? We just we just played. I mean, as we're back then, it wasn't as much hype. I mean, how many games right. do they see on us on TV? Right. Maybe right. once a week. Right. Everything. You know, so yeah, it wasn't the, the media. It wasn't you know so much. So we just kind of just kept playing. We didn't really worry about what was going on or where we were going to be or what was going to happen. We just played hard, and, you know, we just kind of let things, you know, let things play out. So I just – I wasn't the guy that put a lot of pressure on myself. I just – I knew how I played the game. I played it right, and, you know, I let things fall how they may, and that's that's what I try to you Well, know, and people now, I mean, with all the talk shows, the sports, the TV shows, and this, people make picks. Like they had the Indians on the Sports Illustrated mm-hmm. cover. They're going to win it all this year the whole nine yards you know that's one person's opinion whoever says that you know exactly they, they don't realize that once that year starts every year is different no matter how well you go out of last year you have to come back into this year or next year as you would we would say and start all over oh, exactly. again and, exactly and start yeah. from scratch like you said a prediction is just somebody's opinion and either they jump on the bandwagon everybody says it or yeah. ah, i don't know if i want to go there and you still have to play and I mean, it's just like the Indians this year. I mean, they had a lot of injuries, had a lot of people go down. But you know what? They made a great run the last, you know, two or three weeks, and they made it really close. But uh, it's The it's thing that the Indians have are uh, good young starting pitchers that are still developing and going to get better. You know, Kluber won the Cy Young last year, and he has 16 losses this year. And you can see how electric his stuff is. Oh, he's unbelievable. Oh, he's outstanding to watch. Kipnis strikes out to end the inning. Corey, thanks so much for stopping by. As always, great you got to it. see you. Thank you very much. Appreciate Indians it. Indians alumni ambassador Corey Snyder with us. Hey, hey. It remains one nothing right, Cleveland.
Our stat of the game is brought to you by Buick and strikeouts by starters in a single season all time. The Indians are not, fourth. Yeah, that's not too shabby, is it? But look at all those, like, from 02, 03, 13, 15, 14, and then 1969. So the strikeouts have definitely piled up in the last decade. Yes, they have. So, again, I'll ask you because that's the last three years, there's there's a team from each of the last three years on that list. Well, why? Well, I'll tell you why. I, I think because they throw harder, they have better stuff now. So it's pitchers getting better, not necessarily the offense. No, and, and you know what? Starters don't go nine. They don't go for deeper into the game. It turns into... You know, a bullpen game after six innings, and you're getting fresh arms, seems like almost every night for the most part. Um, I think that has a lot to do with the strikeouts now because, because there's some good young hitters around. But I think there's more well, better young pitchers. You know, it's a good point because when I think back to our conversations with Bob Feller, the, the late Hall of Famer, he would talk about, look, when he took the mound, my and granted, I'm not comparing errors, but his mindset was, I have to finish the game. I'm going to go nine innings. Yeah. That's the mindset. Right. And so when he would get down to the six, seven, eight, nine hitters, his thinking was, make these guys put it in play in one or two pitches Save so I can bullets. get a quick out. Yeah. yeah. And Corey Kluber, on the other hand, and this isn't to compare or take anything away, but Corey Kluber's mindset is, I'm out there for roughly 100 to 120 pitches. Now, if that comes in six innings, eight innings, nine innings, I know that's right. the end of my line. Uh, yes. So he's going to—he's not worrying about getting to a certain point in the game. He's worried about putting up as many zeros as he can and, to, you know, obviously give his team a chance to win. So 100 pitches. It might be six innings. It might be seven. He might go nine. And certainly he's got four complete games. So it's not like he's going out there for a five and fly every time either. When, when Corey's on his game, he's getting, you know what, I, I say he's getting about seven eight or nine strikeouts and he's getting about 12 outs on three pitches or less or 15 outs on three pitches or less that's when he stays in the game for eight innings yeah it's not the high strikeout double digit games like chris sale has put up the eight in a row when when these pitchers and that's the one thing the indian young pitchers are learning to get outs on three pitches or less the strikeouts are a bonus you don't care about them they come from getting ahead of hitters and expanding the strike zone but when you when you have one of those nights where you you know you, you don't have your good control, you walk a few guys, you go deep in the counts or they foul some balls off, that's when you're out after six innings because you're at that hundred pitch mark. Or six and a third. And you an ideal start for a, a pitcher now, a starter, give me seven innings, I got my eighth inning guy and I got my closer. Let's go. Game over for the most part. Shot, bloops it over the head of Kipnis and in front of Sands for a base hit. The AT&T U-verse rewind featuring the strikeout pitching of Corey Kluber. Well, when he's on his game, I feel sorry for hitters. That could have been a strike him out, throw him out, but there's a good breaking ball they take. There's that little comeback fastball to Seamer. He's got the cutter. He has three or four different weapons to put you away with. And when hitters don't face him that often, they don't have a book on him, you are in trouble. And right now, Kluber's carving. Gives up the first hit of the game here in the fourth with one out in the fourth. Rusne Castillo will bat. He was calling out on strikes his first time up. Chops it back. You know, I think that's it, why the strikeouts are. There's really a lot of good young arms in this game now. It's fun to watch some of these guys pitch. I'm glad I don't have to hit anymore. Clover 12 of 14 first pitch strikes. Well, Scott Bales kind of joked about it last night when he said, you know, now a quality start is six innings. Well, yeah, it is. I know. You, know, you get a starter to go six. And, you know, I'm not talking about going six and giving up a bunch of runs. But no, no, no. Six, six innings. You, you go six. For me, it's not a quality start. is not six and three runs or less. That's not good for me. It's got to be two or less if you're going to go six. Because nowadays, you, if the offense is down, you got to score four anyway. Yeah. So sometimes you got to win when you get three. You know what I'm saying? So that three runs in six innings doesn't do you any good, especially if you're going up against a good pitcher.
Swung on and missed. Another strikeout for Kluber, number eight on the night. And there are two down in the fourth. This will be our Circle K strikeout of the night. And it's the snowman. He rides that fastball up letter high to Castillo. Gets the swing and miss. You just want Jerry Reed smoking the bandit. <laughs> yeah. Snowman. The snowman. You got a snowman coming at you. <laughs> Two down for Brock Holt. Called out on strikes in the second. Great movie, by the way. And a strike is called as Brock Holt was locked out on a fastball his first time up. Missed inside and briefly got away from Jan Gomes. There you go, 13 of 15, strike ones. And sometimes that's what uh, teams that have seen Kluber before, what they've done this year to combat that, they've gotten after the first pitch. And sometimes they've had success putting the ball in play. Chop towards short. Lindor has to hurry. Unloads, and he got him by a step. No runs a hit. One man left. Middle of the fourth. One nothing Cleveland. Time now to tweet your strongest fan photo to us using the hashtag STO Data Strong Fan for a chance to have one of your photos shown during an upcoming telecast, courtesy of T Mobile. Uh oh, here it comes. It's oh back. My. Yeah, where'd that I didn't come realize. From? I don't know, but it's back. Sure, you can hear it on the field mics. There's a fly ball hit the deep left field and that baby is long gone halfway up the bleachers. Ryan Rayburn rocks the yard to make it two nothing Cleveland. <laughs> Boy.
Well, you look at both home runs hit by the Indians, Santana, now Rayburn, and that pitch looked like a changeup that just had nothing. It really had nothing on it, stayed right there, and he smoked it. Pretty much the same pitch that Santana hit out of the ballpark, gave him some swinging room, and it just stayed right there out over the plate. And they both hit him a ton. Wow, Mike Pock, the interesting, tells me that all eight home runs for Rayburn this year have been solo shots. Han Solo. I didn't realize that. There's Carlos Santana, whose solo homer gave the Indians a 1 nothing lead in the second. Foul right back. Watch the same pitch here in the second inning. Santana got into one and hit it out of here. Well, that's how the Indians have been on the board today. Two solo home runs off Craig Greslow. I guess uh, I guess this would be a passing shower. I don't see the grounds crew perched behind the tarp. So I don't that, either. That would indicate that this forecast doesn't say this is going to be here long. We hope. Yeah, our folks over at Channel 3 tell us just a tiny dot on the radar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice talking to them. They're inside. Santana rolls one on the dirt to short. One away. Time for a Mazda game break. Let's go to Al Pulaski. Hey, Matt, Rick, the Blue Jays trying to keep track of the Kansas City Royals for that home field advantage. They have a 3-2 lead in the ninth inning now against the Rays. Edwin Encarnacion, his 39th home run of the season. That's been the difference thus far. Blue Jays by one. Matt, Rick. All right, thanks, Al. Jan Gomes doubled his first time up. That curveball slipped out of his hand. It's 1 0. There's a pop up by the dugout. Travis Shaw. Two down. Well, check out the Tribe's final game tomorrow. $10 bleacher seats. You can watch the Tribe from one of the best views at the ballpark. $10. Get your bleacher tickets only at Indians.com. With two down, Giovanni Urshela will be the batter. After the home run, three quick outs, but the Indians lead it by a score of two to nothing. Thanks to Ryan Rayburn's solo shot to the bleachers here in the fourth.
Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T Uverse, has more channels on the go than cable. Corey Kluber has given a one hit through four shutout innings of work. He has walked two and struck out eight. Yeah, Kluber's been on his game tonight. 13 of 15, first pitch strikes. 9 0 2, 1 2 counts. And he's got seven outs on three pitches or less. Well, that rain got the attention, didn't it, of the ground crew? Yeah, they had to get out there and do some quick uh -huh. repairs. Bottom third of the order for Boston as Devin Marrero leads it off. Swung on and missed. Good slider. And it's 0 2. Big chopper to first. Kluber's there to cover. One away. Our great clip of the game, some Francisco Lindor defense. He's made a lot of spectacular plays on the season. Showing tremendous range up the middle, in the hole. Very yeah. good throwing arm. How quick does this guy get back to his feet? That's the thing. When he's on the ground, he's up in the blink of an eye. Fun to watch. You know, I'm thinking back to Corey Snyder's comments about how things are different. You know, when they were on the cover of Sports Illustrated in 1987, it was cool, but it wasn't a big deal like it would be today. Like it was this spring. It was a big story throughout spring training when the Indians were put on the cover. And, and, well, I, and I think Francisco Lindor will have to deal next spring training with a lot of ridiculous expectations. And a lot of his time will be taken up with you know, writers and media reporters who are going to want to come in and talk to him about how you're going to improve, how you're going to get yeah. better, how you're going to top last that's year. That's true. And so that's something that he's never had to deal with before, but he'll have to it's figure out It's all part of the growing up process yeah. at the major league level and uh, hopefully becoming a star. It's going to drop in left field. Sandy Leone with a base hit and a one-out single for the Red Sox, their second hit of the night. Well, we'll see. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things you could talk about. And, you know, for the hot stove leagues, they'll be talking about it all winter long. What do they do? Where do they add? You know, do they add a center fielder, a right fielder, you know, a first baseman? What do you do? There's a lot of guys that have come up and had opportunities, given opportunities like an El Monte, like Urshela, you know. Ramirez is a utility guy going all over the place. Yes, he did. I think the hard thing if you're Chris Antonetti and you're looking over the off season, looking to upgrade your team, and, and as you pointed out, they, 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 what this team really could use is a, a thumper, you right? Know, a power run producer in the middle of the lineup, preferably a guy who can play center or right field, maybe you know one of those spots. Um, but there are very few sure things out there when you start looking around at potential trades and you know, what you can afford. Right. So how much do you upset the apple cart? Swing and a miss down and oh throw boy, it. Forget about it. Time. Gumps through that from the left-handed batter's box. 
And I mean, he just threw a seed, and it was perfect. You could see he had him beat by a mile. The hit and run was on. That's why he had to swing at the pitch. And, you know, as the batter, you don't have to get down in that crowd. You can make him throw around you. He did him a favor. Watch him get down. He ducks. Well, I don't know if he did that on purpose or if well, he just. Well, you're right. He, he screwed he himself into the ground. Yeah. He screwed himself into the ground, but Gomes came up and just fired a seed. I know Leon's a catcher, but. And that's going to bring the inning to a quick end. Kluber on nine pitches. Goes through Boston here in the fifth. Two nothing Cleveland. On top two to nothing. Abraham Almonte, Jerry Sands, and Francisco Lindor do up here for Cleveland. Almonte popped up on the infield his first time up. And a strike is called. Big curveball missed outside. That's one on one. There's Jack O'Lantern. And as we reach the nine o'clock hour, Abraham Almonte bangs it to third. One away. In game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. Carlos Santana sent one of the bleachers in the second inning. Ryan Rayburn sent one of the bleachers in the fourth. And that's been all the scoring so far. Corey Kluber's made it stand up. He has struck out eight in five shutout innings of work. Now Jerry Sands, who popped up on the infield, is only time up.
There's a line drive base hit in the left field. Last night, Jerry Sands smoked one down the left field line for a double. And also drove one out to right field. That was the home run that shot out of there. It sure did. Outside he missed two and oh. Okay, let's see what uh, Corey Snyder said. Three and zero. Let's yeah. go. Get after. It. Let's see if he, he he gets a pitch to his liking right here. Three and zero. If he even will swing or just take it all away. Hard to tell if he had much interest in that particular pitch or not. Now the three one. Now go to second. There's one on the first. Not in time. You know, there's probably a really good reason why the batting average is whatever he said it was 340, 350, 380, whatever yeah. it is when you swing at a 3 0 pitch. Because as a hitter, you can literally just zero in and say, okay, if it's in this particular spot, I'll get after it. If yeah. it's not, I'm not going to swing. So. Therefore, if you get that pitch where you're looking for it, you put up a good swing on it, chances are you're going to do something You're going to hit it hard. Yeah. You're, you should hit it hard. Well, and, and what happens, I think, it used to be only your great hitters would get the green light 3-0. and oh. You know, I'm talking about your great hitters, your Stremsky, Mays, you know, guys like that. You get that because they've proven that they can hit the ball and they, and they hit it hard. But nowadays it's changed. That could be the best pitch you've seen in that bat. Deep to left, Castillo on the warning track pulls it down. That'll end the inning. Five complete, Cleveland two, Boston nothing. Well, I got one more inning. He feels good, huh? Look so at, look at Carl, Willis. Carl Willis. Okay. 
Well, Carl starts smiling. He said, hey, if he asks for it, give it to him. <laughs> How would Carl say it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you had it about right. Well, 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 give it to him. <laughs> Here's our T-Mobile Data Strong fan photo of the game. You can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO Data Strong Fan for a chance to have one of your shown during our final game of the season tomorrow. Well, we go to the sixth and top of the order due up for Boston. Corey Kluber, five shutout innings with eight strikeouts. He's made 74 pitches to this point. Yeah, we got to see if we can get uh, the ketchup, mustard, and onion picture taken with Kreskin tomorrow at home plate. Mookie Betts has walked and struck out, takes ball one. Back out of play. Corey Kluber with a 2 1. There's a pop up. Left fielder Mike Avilas. One down. We're on the countdown to face off of the NHL season in the Buckeye State. Columbus Blue Jackets will take on the New York Rangers opening night. And it's just six days away on the home of the Blue Jackets, Fox Sports Ohio. Josh Rutledge takes it's a little bit high ball one. Into foul ground, but not enough room for Gomes to get there. Astros 1 0 over the Diamondbacks after three innings of play in Arizona. Astros in a must win situation, really. They don't want to go into the last day of the season tied with the Angels. Well, I'll tell you what, they have done a well of a job against the National League this year. They are 15 and 3. It's yeah. what the Indians did back in 2005, remember? Yeah. Played the West Coast or the Western Division in interleague play, and they went out. I think they were 15-3. and three. Ground ball to short. Throws him out two away. Now Max Scherzer is at it again, trying to throw his second no-hitter of the year. He has thrown a no-hitter. Is it through seven or eight now? I think it's eight. Through eight. It is through eight. He has struck out 15 batters in that ballgame. And in that game, Matt Harvey started for the Mets and, and did a nice job. He went six innings. And I think he gave up one unearned run and struck out 11. Wow. Nationals lead it 2 nothing. Going to the ninth. Missed outside.
At the knees, a strike call. That's right. Go back to uh, Scherzer in June. No hit the Pirates. Right. He hit a batter with two outs, cost him the perfect game. Two outs in the ninth. Was it Francisco Cervelli? No. I don't remember who he um, hit. There's a drive to center. Back goes Almonte. Makes the catch. One, two, three. You know, the Boston Red Sox, Corey Kluber, six shutout innings so far tonight. Might as well make your uh, reservations. 2016 spring training travel plans right now. The Indians have the perfect travel package that fits your schedule. Plus, you can enter how to win a trip to the desert. Visit Indians.com slash get good year for the uh, contest details. Jason Kipnis singled in the first, struck out in the third. Takes a strike. Ground ball to second. And Pedroia throws him out, one away. Ryan Rayburn's last at bat drove it, drove it deep to left field. 426 feet away, to be exact. Well, when he came in, he said one more. You thought it was inning, it was hitter. Because how comes Tori Lovello to replace Craig Breslow, and not a bad job in his second start of his career. Not at all. 522 relief appearances. He started against Baltimore. His second start tonight gives up five hits and a pair of runs. Not too shabby. Both runs coming on solo homers. So that's going to do it for Craig Breslow and the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. Has been made with one out here in the
Arkea in the driver's seat. American League home run leaders. Chris Davis at the top. Nelson Cruz, Josh Donaldson, Mike Trout, Jose Batista. Funny, you know, you, you think about Seattle and oh, it's a tough place. You can't hit home runs there. Nelson Cruz. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter where he plays at Texas, Baltimore, Seattle. He's a 40 home run guy, no question. Matt Barnes with the one out here in the sixth. No, that is not the forward for the Clippers. <laughs> who is now with the Charlotte Hornets. Lonnie Chisinau coming on to bat for Rayburn, who homered his last time up. And Lonnie chases a breaking ball in the dirt. It's 0-2. This one foul. That'll find the seats. Nothing in two. Out of play. And a foul back. Chases one in the dirt. And Chisholm all strikes out two down. Santana homered in the second, grounded out his last time up. And then he takes low ball one. The Indians only with five hits tonight. Two of them that left the ballpark. Gomes has a double, single by Kipnis. Single by Sands. That's it. Now they're going to switch. And that's a strike called to Santana. Two and one. Upstairs, three balls and a strike. Here we go. Right back below us. Oh, that's too bad. Almost that was in the about wheelhouse. as close as we can get right there. Two down and the base is empty with the Indians up 2 nothing here in the home half of the sixth. The 3 2 pitch, a foul right back. Santana draws a two out walk. Seems about right. 
Yeah, and what does he have, 105 now? He's right there. He's right behind Bautista by a couple. That gives him 107. He's tied okay. with Bautista. Down to Andre. You know, guys keep keep stats and keep personal items all the time. Well, last night Santana took a base home. I asked him why. He said it was his 500th career walk, and he wanted to take it home and put it up in his basement. I asked him if he planned on getting a thousand. He looked at me and laughed. <laughs> well, at the rate he goes, five more years he'll have a thousand. Yeah, you walk a hundred times a year. Not that he's going to do it every year, but. Matt Barnes struck out Lonnie Chisholm and then walked Santana. Fastball misses outside, 2-0. Outside, he missed. Three balls, no strikes. Taking. That's in there. And the three one goes right back to the screen. I guess that kind of goes back to an earlier conversation. If you like the three oh pitch, nothing wrong with getting after it. Well, not you know, I guess it depends on the time of the game if the manager wants to let you swing. He'll make some hitters take. There's a breaking ball that hung, and Gomes wraps it into center field. So he took advantage. You're going to see a breaking ball that stayed upstairs that Gomes takes advantage of. There it is, belled high out over the plate. Easy pitch. You better throw that one and duck, and he did. So first and second now with two outs, the sixth hit for the Indians. And Giovanni Urshela, 0 for 2, will be the battery. His flight out grounded up. Back out of play. Now the O2. Out of play.
Two on, two out, 0 2 pitch. And he fights it off right back. Leon out for a quick chat. Or shell up. Awaits the 0 2. And a breaking ball in the dirt got him. Now throw to first to end the inning. Drive strands a pair. We played six. It remains Cleveland two, Boston nothing. Brought to you by Miller Light. Corey Kluber has been outstanding in his final start of the season. Six shutout innings. He has struck out eight Red Sox batters. And at one point, he had six consecutive outs all via the strikeout. Well, right around here is when he's, he's usually at his best. 16 to 21, as I told you, first pitch strikes. 11 0 2, 1 2 counts. And also 11 outs on three pitches or less. So he's been dealing again. It's a good way to, to end it. Six zeros on the board, and he's out here for the seventh. Jose Ramirez has come on to replace Jason Kipnis at second base. And Travis Shaw looks at a ball down low. Shaw singled his last time up. Called strike one on one. Pop back out of play. <laughs> the masked man. They're lucky it isn't as windy tonight as it was. Yeah. Last couple of nights with the temperature a little cooler. Strike three called. Shaw's out looking. And that gives Corey Kluber now nine strikeouts on the night. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. 
Well, man, Rick, speaking of strikeouts and special performances, how about Max Scherzer tonight? For the second time this year, he tosses a no-hitter, a career-high 17 strikeouts, and both of his no-hitters against playoff teams. Tonight, the Mets earlier this year against Pittsburgh, guys. Thanks, Al. He had struck out nine in a row until Curtis Granderson popped up to end the game. Wow. Boy, that's putting an exclamation point on it, isn't it? You're not kidding. Nine straight. The only guy to reach was uh, Kevin Plawecki, who had a ground ball, and then the, the throw was in the dirt to first base. Well, it, we just mentioned his first no-hitter. He was eight and two-thirds before he hit a guy. Yeah. Or it would have been a perfect game. Skips it by Kluber. Ramirez throws out Rusne Castillo. All right, so two no-hitters in a single season. Roy Halladay did it, but his included a postseason game. So the last guy to do it in a regular season was over 40 years ago, Nolan Ryan. Yeah. Well, you know, one is amazing in its own right. As you know, as you know we've seen really a, a few close ones this year. But to do two in one year, that's something very, very, very special. What makes Virgil Trucks on that list so amazing is that Mike Pachta points out he went 5-19 and 19 that year. And had two no-hitters? How do you lose 19 games and throw two no-nos? Well, he had everything working in those two games. I, I, maybe he had I a bad team. can't tell you. you know, maybe he pitched well and they lost a lot of close games. No run support. Don't ask Mike because he'll dig it up. Oh, yeah. Pulls it foul. Rock hold 0 for 2. I think he got him. He sure did. And that's got to really hurt on a night like this. Now, it was almost look, it looked like he, 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 there wasn't any way he could get out of it. I think he got him on get the Get out of the way. Too. It, it might have. I mean, check his back leg as he's squaring up to, to go after it. And by that time, he can't get out of it. It hits him right on the top of the knee. Sure did. He wanted to get out of the way, but he was shifting his weight, and he couldn't do anything with his feet. Ends up taking one right on the kneecap. Wow, so while he's down in pain. Okay, I did a quick look up, quick search. Virgil Trucks, 1952. I'm going to give you all his losses, all 19 of them. He loses five to four, seven to five, five to three, ten to six. That's a bad one. Eight to five. But then how about this string? He loses three to nothing, three to two, four to three, three to one, five to two, three to nothing, four to two, three to one, three to two. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? One to nothing. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a lot of offensive so support. He lost a lot of games, but he didn't give up a ton of runs either. Looks like Brock yeah. Holt's Oh, yeah, up. he's done. No doubt he's coming out. That knee, his left knee, there's not much pressure he can put on it. He just couldn't get out of the way. And that Alan, Alan Craig, Craig will come on to run for him. So, Devin Marrero will be the batter. He has walked and grounded out. It's 
squibs it to first. It stays fair. Santana will step on the bag and end the inning. Stretch time in Cleveland. Indians up 2-0. And the seventh inning stretch is brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Stay tuned for Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio with Al and Jensen of the highlights. And so far, it's been a couple of big blasts from the Indians and really good pitching from Corey Kluber. Yeah, I mean, you look at this and it's it's no big deal, but it's, it's only a two-run game. You get one person on and a homer ties it. So you'd like to see the Indians maybe put another one or two on the board here. Now Monte with a good drag bunt, but actually bumming that one too hard. Yep, just took it with him. And I'll tell you what, he's done a nice job doing that this year, either pushing it that way from the right side or taking it with him from the left side. That one it was just a little too hard, but there's nothing wrong with that. He's got a nice touch and a nice feel. You don't see many guys that could take it with him down the line anymore. Let's get on to Andre, who has more on the bunting ability of Abraham El Monte. I had a very interesting conversation with Abe last night. He said, well, you remember the play Dustin Pedroia made on him on the bunt yes. down the line? He told me, he goes, look, he deserved to get me out. He goes, I could see out of my eye when I went to bunt. He said he took four steps before I bunted the ball. I go, you can see both of those things? He looked at me and smiled, and he says, yes. He goes, sometimes I pull back and don't bunt when I see a guy coming down yeah. and charging me hard. It's just amazing that he has that type of peripheral vision and can still bunt a baseball, but he loves doing it, Rick. He loves bunting and, and watching where the fielders line up when he tries to do it. You know, it's an art, and, and it's fun to watch someone do it now because guys don't do it anymore. It's a, it's a lost art. And, boy, it's fun to watch a guy. And, and you know what? He knows what he wants to do. He knows the pitch he's looking for. And I understand when he says, you know, I can see that guy move. But he still laid down a great bunt. Pedroia made a great play. And he said that. He goes, Pedroia got me that time. He goes, I'll try again. But he got me on yeah, that one. But, and he says left-handed. He can do the same thing. He says he likes bunting on both sides. He goes, it's not one side or the other. He goes, left-handed, he does the same thing with the third baseman and kind of feels him out as well. I like it. I like it a lot. You get yourself some extra base hits that way, and you keep the infielders honest. You keep the pressure on the defense. I think it's a lot of fun. You'd be amazed how many times you may get base hits because pitchers can't field. You know, they'll end up trying to make a play or something, and they'll you know botch the play or botch a ball and they won't be able to throw it to first base and the next thing you know you can have a big inning just from one little mistake like that a 
Well, we've seen it too many times to count as the rain comes back here at Progressive Field. I'll tell you one thing. If I was a National League team I, and Lester's pitching, I would bunt on him religiously. And make him come off the mound, grab the ball, and try to throw it to first base. And that way, I think you'd get into his head. Fouled back. Here come the chance. And Jerry Sands drives one to deep center field. Bradley on the warning track will make the catch. <laughs> Fans thought they had one. Yeah, they they sure started did. the chant. Upstairs. <laughs> Lindor cuts and misses in the count. There's a ball and a strike. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Spun him out of there. Two and one. He fouled out on the first behind the plate. Grounded to first base in the third and then bounced into a fielder's choice in that fifth inning. Good fastball from Barnes at 95 and he fouls it back. Shoots it in the left field, a base hit over near the line. Uh -oh. And it gets by Castillo, and he'll promptly take second base. You know, I'm curious to see what they, they score here. Might be a double. You know what, because we've seen this before on that, that rubber ice track. When a ball hits that and the spin going away from him, watch how it slides towards the seats. If you don't get there and get it on the first bounce, you're in trouble. Right there, you see it take off, that's a double. That's not an error. I agree. That ball took off. It's wet. There's no way. Is that a double? I think they scored it a single in an error. No, that. he's got to look at it again. That ball, it, it took off on that track. It shot by the outfielder. He had really no chance of getting that ball, in my opinion. They may score it this way, but I think they'll look at it again. Mike Avila's 0 for 3 on the night. Takes upstairs. Watch this ball when it scoots on the track. See, that took off, and he really had no chance to get the ball. I mean, he thought he had it there, and he did, but once that ball hits the track, it spins away from him. It would be a 22nd double of the year should they change their scoring. That's one of those scoring decisions, too, where, you know, why, why punish the, the, the defender on a cool, slick night? The well, field's wet. It's been raining off and on all night long. My point is, when an infielder has an above-average opportunity to have to make an attempt to go get the ball, 
okay, it's an error because it was a tough play. That's a tough play for an outfielder. Yeah. That's not a routine play by any stretch of the imagination to cut that ball off in the conditions that they're in right now. Well, Bielis draws a two-out walk to keep the inning alive. Enjoy an evening of networking and collegiate boxing in iconic Tower City Center. The Cleveland Boxing Invitational presented by First National Bank returns on November the 13th. For more information, visit clevelandboxinginvitational.com. Time out for a pitching change. Matt Barnes is out. We'll tell you who's coming on next when we come back. And Tommy Lane is the new Red Sox pitcher, a left-hander. Pitched a scoreless inning on uh, Wednesday night in New York, but he did walk three batters, one intentionally. Left-handed batters are just three for their last 34 against him. So a specialist, but he's going to get the switch hitter, and he's going to get Ramirez from the right side. Yeah. That had been the Jason Kipnis spot in the order, but Jose Ramirez came on for him. Alani Chisinau would be next. Ball gets away. Lindor moves. Avilas did not. Yeah, he wasn't paying attention at first base. That's probably a pass ball. I don't think that ball hit the dirt. Unless he was crossed up, which could be with the runner at second. Take a look at it out there. Lindor has the good view. He can see how far it trickles away, and Avilas just never got started. See that pitch? I think that ball, he was looking for another pitch. It I sure think he got look, crossed yeah, up. Yeah. He wasn't confident going after that pitch. I'm guessing that was a cross-up, even though it'll go as a pass, pass ball. That one was down in the dirt. Leon able to stop it. It's two and one. Well, the Indians had their first two guys that were out in this inning. Then the double by Lindor, the walk by Avilas. And they have a chance to open this up a little bit more here with two outs.
A little bit high. And a full count. To center field, Bradley got a good break on it and makes the catch to end the inning. Seven in the books, 2 nothing, Cleveland. may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Two nothing the Indians lead it. And we go to the eighth inning. Sandy Leone, the leadoff for Boston, then Jackie Bradley and Mookie Betts. There's a strike over the inside corner. Corey Kluber has been dynamite. Yeah, tonight. back in there, pound in the strike zone, 96 strikes. Excuse me, 96 pitches, 68 strikes. And there's a base hit in the right field for Leon. His second hit of yeah, the night. Yeah, he's done a nice job. He blooped one into left field the other time and then gets a base hit here now to right. He was 19 for 109 on the year coming Go in. Go figure that one out. He's huh? two for three against Kluber. Off Kluber. Hard to figure that one out, but he's been on base. Brian Shaw up in the tribe bullpen. Jackie Bradley struck out in the third, fly to right in the fifth. Fastball misses outside. And that's low. Two balls, no strikes.
20 pitch third, but he's had some. That, that's typical Corey Kluber right there into the eighth inning at 100 pitches. Oh, nice pitch over the outside corner there, three and one. There's a case where if a hitter is sitting three and oh, that's not yeah. a pitch he's going to get after. Right. Well, that's where you take it. You can be very disciplined and still got to come back with a good pitch here. And the three one count. To the Santana glove. To second for one, back to first. It's an inning in, or it's a double play, I should say. Boy, Santana came off the bag, made a nice grab and a good feed to Lindor, and Corey Kluber was right there to take the return feed. How nice was that? One hopper going to second, and Kluber gets over there in a hurry, and it made an easy throw for Lindor to first base. That's not an easy play sometimes if the pitcher's heading to first base, but Kluber got over there quickly. Gave him a target to shoot at, and they turned the double play. Well done. And the rain is back. It is. Uh huh, a little misting. Uh, a reminder tomorrow, not a typical Sunday afternoon start. This is the first year baseball has gone to a uniform. Everybody starts at 3 o'clock Eastern time uh -huh. tomorrow. A little different, but the rain should be cleared out by then, so yeah, should all be good. And a strike at the knees. The 2 2 to center field. Back is El Monte and makes the catch. Eight shutout innings for Corey Kluber. The Indians lead it 2 0.
His night is over. He goes eight shutout innings in his season finale, giving up just three hits. Struck out nine. A very, very good outing for Kluber. In the meantime, the Boston pitcher was warming up. I believe it was still Tommy Lane. Yeah, it was. And, and in the midst of his warm up, I don't know if he hurt himself or what, but he's out of there. So we got a pitching change during the uh, during the warm up session. So I guess we'll take another timeout. We'll be right back with a new Red Sox pitcher after this. with the American League Division and Championship Series. Don't miss a moment of the drama. It all begins October the 8th on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Jesus Aguilar takes inside ball one. Out of play to the right. Wow. Pretty good fastball up and in. Just 92 on the radar gun, but it definitely had some movement. Our Pat O'Brien Chevrolet plays of the game, the two solo homers. That's been all the offense for the Tribe and all the offense in the game, really. Yeah, that's what it did. Uh, the Both of them hitting about the same spot. Both of them were pitches that were just middle of the plate, not much on them. And uh, they left it. Breslow left him right there for him, and they took advantage of it. And that's really all that's been there today. Ten hits in the game. The Indians with seven of them. Kluber, eight shutout innings. Swing and a miss by Santana. One and one to count.
Missed upstairs. Two balls and a strike. There's a line drive, base hit in the left center. Santana's going for two. The throw is not in time. He beat the tag. Santana with a one out double. Looked like Bogertz got there before Santana, but he might have missed him. Well, he takes it the other way now. They were playing him, they had the shift, and he just hustles. That's where doubles are made coming out of the box. He didn't hesitate and he's going to hustle all the way slide and beat the tag. Umpire is right on the play. He has to go get the ball bring it back. Look it looks like he's got him. But that hand gets in before he can apply the tag. Good hustle by Santana. I give him credit. He came right out of the box thinking two all the way. And he got it double number twenty nine. Yeah, Bogarts, by the time he got the tag on him, you could see Santana had the hand in. I wonder how many sunflower seeds he might have swallowed as he was running <laughs> the second base. Are you sure those are sunflower seeds? <laughs> wow. That was right out of the box, though. That was good hustle. See if the Indians can take advantage of it. Jan Gomes on a two-hit night. Checks on a fastball strike. Gomes extended his hitting streak to 10 games with a double in the second, then he singled in the sixth. And a fastball blazed by him. So we're going to miss. Down goes Gomes. Let's go down to Andre with more on Giovanni Urshela. Yes, Giovanni has basically battled his own body more than he's battled fastballs and curveballs this year. And in the offseason, Terry Francona was thinking they would send him to Goodyear, Arizona, and let him work on his body so he could be healthy for spring training. Today, though, Giovanni told him that he plans on going down to Orlando before and after the new year to work out with Francisco Lindor. Terry Francona thought about it. He said rather than him playing any winter ball, he'll let those two work out together and get ready for the 2016 season. Well, let's hope they uh, come back and he's ready for it. If he knows what to do to get himself ready, if he's battled injuries all year long, that's the number one thing. You, you have to have your health if you're going to put up a good year. And he was fortunate enough to get called up to the big leagues and get an opportunity to play here. When we found out the guy has a great glove, he can play third base. But can he do it on a daily basis? And, and can his offense uh, survive? If you're healthy, who knows? Let's hope uh, he comes back and he is healthy all year next year. Line drive into the glove of the second baseman Rutledge to end the inning. We'll go to the ninth. Two nothing Cleveland.
Your second straight win over the Red Sox. Cody Allen's come on, and Jensen, Corey Kluber tonight. Another exceptional start. Great way to finish the year. Punched out seven of the first nine guys he faced, and really from pitch number one, just the command of everything. This was the guy that we saw all year last year. Great to see him end on a high note. We'll talk more about it coming up on Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care right after this one for the call in the ninth. Here are Matt and Rick, fellas. All right, thanks a lot, Al and Jensen, and you're exactly right. This was the Corey Kluber we saw last year pitching here this evening. And, and we saw him throughout this season. There were times where he was the dominant ace of the staff. But as I pointed out at the outset of our telecast, you know, Corey came out and was winless in his first five starts and was winless, uh, you know, 0-4 over his last however many decisions. And... You take those nine losses, and that's that's more than half of his losses. He had 16 well, losses coming in. You know, the funny thing is he was he was very good again tonight. And you look up at the scoreboard, and the offense still only has him two runs on the board. Yeah. So I'm saying, you know, there's there's not a lot of room yeah. for error. It, and it's it's been like that a lot this year, and sometimes it goes that way. Um, I bet next year it's going to be different, and he'll approach it no differently, but. He still has great stuff, a lot of weapons. Cody this, Allen take, uh, throws a strike into Josh Rutledge. This will be the first time he's trying to beat an Eastern Division team since last year, late September. So it'll be a full year, and he's had, what, five starts against him, I believe. Corey Kluber finishing with 200 and. 45 strikeouts on the year. To right field where Jerry Sands makes the catch. So only Kluber, McDowell, and Feller punched out 245 in multiple seasons consecutively for the Indians in history. All right, so uh, looking back at our keys to the game, brought to you by Wayside Furniture, run support for Kluber. Not a lot of it, but uh, enough to this point. Two solo homers, 21 of his 32 starts. He only gave him two runs. You know, we talking about Virgil Trucks before. Yeah, right. You know, where he had the two no hitters and Kluber had five actually five wins on the year. Kluber will finish with a better ERA than Virgil Trucks did that year. Trucks was 397. Kluber came in at 362, so his ERA goes down. But, you know, that's sometimes you are at the mercy of. That's true. That's why wins and losses sometimes it's, uh, you, you can't help that. All you can do is keep your team into a ball game, and hopefully your offense comes around. And even more so in this day and age than it was back when Virgil pitched. Because in this day and age, you're at the mercy of the offense and the bullpen. Because you might only be out there for six or seven innings. So let's say the offense doesn't score, you know, maybe they only score you one or two runs, but you come out and it's a 2-2 game. You've done your job, yeah. but it's you're not involved in the decision. So you're right. Sometimes wins and losses are just beyond the pitcher's control. And yeah, I mean... All you can do is go deep into the game, and you hope you have a chance. If you go five and fly, it's rare you're going to get a win, no matter how well you pitch. Bogarts 0 for 3 on the night. Able to hold up on that pitch, it's 3 and 1. They were delayed for half an hour to get this game underway tonight. Played through some rain as well. And that fastball, big chopper to second. From the outfield grass, Ramirez throws him out, two down. Fastball strike.
The 0 1. Inside he missed. Breaking ball in the dirt. Did he go? He did not. Seventeen thousand three hundred forty two frosty damp. But cheering them on to the end here tonight. Swing and a miss. It's two and two. Cody Allen delivers strike three call the game is over Allen nails down his 33rd save of the season and Corey Kluber wins his season finale to finish 9 and 16 on the year the Indians are back to 500 at 80 and 80 heading into the final game of the season tomorrow afternoon. Boston goes to 78 and 83. Craig Breslow takes the loss, and he'll finish the year 0 and 4 for the Red Sox. Well, what a, a nice ball game overall! Another shutout for the Indians. That's their 10th on the year. Kluber came on. What a good way to end his year! A couple of solo home runs. Santana, number 19. Also, he's got 29 doubles. So, overall, a really good ball game. They got it in. A little chilly tonight. So we'll go fan appreciation night. They're going to enjoy it with fireworks afterwards. All right, so we've got a timeout. We'll be back with some final thoughts right after this.